G'day guys and welcome to the Jess Talk Australia roster breakdown. Um, this is the first of the three part series. We'll, be, we'll just be having a look through the death charts coming coming up to to the OTAs which start on Tuesday. Um, we're going to have a look at the three different parts of a roster, obviously offense, defense and special teams, on who we think the starters would be going into OTAs so on Tuesday, so who's on the roster now. And if we think that that'll change going forward. Um, so we'll start, as I said today, the first part is going to be the offense. Uh, so we'll start with the most important position on any football team, which is the quarterback position. Um, currently, Geno Smith is the starter. Um, yeah, with, with no Fitzpatrick, uh, they're still in a holding period. Fitzpatrick's management and the Jets... Um, so, you say what you want about Gino. Um, he took the Jets to eight and eight in his last season as a starter in twenty fourteen, um, with not a lot around him in terms of of talent. Um, he's got a little bit of talent around him now, with obviously with Marshall and Decker, and then you've got players like Quincy and Nunwa behind them, and then you've got um, Matt Forte. And so we'll go into those players later, but. Um, if Fitzpatrick doesn't come back, I don't think it's the end of the world for Jets Nation. Um, it might be frustrating at times. Obviously, not a lot of people are big fans of Geno, but um, I have faith in him that if he's given the sh an opportunity, that he might be able to take the team. Um, but saying that, I really hope that Fitzpatrick's back. I believe that he'll be back around just before training camp, so around that around that June-ish time. Um, so that'll be really interesting to see how that all pans out. Um, yeah, so that's that's um, that's the quarterback situation at the moment. Um, you've also got Bryce Petty, the second-year player this year, um, rookie last year, didn't get an opportunity. It was red-shirted all through the rookie season. Uh, all through the regular season, sorry. Um, I think he played in the preseason. Um, showed some stuff there. He's got a big arm. He's got a lot of talent. Um, and then you've got Obviously, uh, pick 51 from this year's draft, Christian Hackenberg. Um, very much similar to Bryce in the fact that he comes comes from a different offense, a totally different offense in college to what the Jets will be um, using. Um, his, his first year, he played under Bill O'Brien at, at Penn and was quite, um, quite productive. And then um, change of code, change of offensive line. He struggled quite a bit, so hopefully um, Hackenberg can get back to that. Um, there have been quite a few questions asked to me about um, what will happen if Fitzpatrick and Gino both come back. Obviously, there won't be any room for four quarterbacks on the on the 53. Um, that's a situation where it might be between Bryce and Gino to see who gets that backup role. Um, but honestly, um, as much as I love Bryce and he's a good bloke and um, I think Bryce might be in a bit of trouble if if they don't want to take four quarterbacks into the season. Um, yeah, so that's the quarterback situation. Uh, running backs, the next one we're going to go through now. In my opinion, I wrote it. Um, I wrote an article for the Jet Press about a week ago, um, looking looking at the depth the, the depth of the running back position, and it's definitely one of the one of the deepest positions on the team, and it's such a such an important position, um, especially with the way the Jets play with the four wide sets. Being able to have someone to run, to run the ball and have those make those those hard yards up the middle. Um, yeah, so um, we've picked up Matt Forte from the Chicago Bears, who is, will be going in as a starter on Tuesday, and I think he'll keep his spot. All, um, so he'll be he'll be I reckon taking the first snap at at running back come. Week one, um, he's a phenomenal player. He's led the NFL in the past um, eight years since he's been drafted in um, total rushing yards as well as receptions by a running back. So um, he's he's definitely got a lot of talent there. Um, you got you also got um, the Jets went out and got Bilal Powell back in the off season. Um, Bilal was fantastic last year. Uh, he's got a lot of pace. He, he can definitely be used on 
from screen some screen plays. Um, he can be used on some pitches or some outside zone runs. Um, he's definitely got a bit of a bit of pace about him, as I said, and um, so he could he'll definitely see some snaps. Um, as with the other running back that the Jets have brought in is Kyrie Robertson, who come from the New Orleans Saints, who's an absolutely vicious runner. Um, absolutely vicious runner. Um, he's an absolute wrecking ball. Um, so he'll he'll play that that Chris Ivory type runner role where he just comes in and just runs as hard as he can. His whole idea is to try and knock over. Pardon me, yards after contact is is his his bread and butter. So. Um, Expect to see him in those situations. Um, we've got um, so we've got fullback next. Um, Tommy Bohannon's been there for a while now. Um, he's solid as ever. Had a had a good season last year, Tommy. Um, so I can't see they, they'll bring two more in. Oh, sorry, just adjust that. There we go. Um, he'll also they'll bring in a couple of fullbacks come come training camp, but I can't see can't see him. Being knocked out of that role because he was just he's just been uh, a very solid player there for the Jets um, at that fullback role, which is very important. Um, as I said, with that full wide set that Gailey uses quite a bit um, to be able to have that extra blocker as a as a as a fullback to come in in those eye formations, um, vital for the team. All right, so uh, next up we've got tight end. Now tight end was a position last year, obviously. If you even followed closely to the Jets or the NFL, you know that the Jets had little to no production from there, from the run, uh, running back, sorry, tight end position last year. Um, Kellen Davis um, was was near near to um, no existence there in terms of offensive production. Um, Zach Sudfeld as well. I think they had eight catches between them for the whole season, um, which obviously isn't ideal. Um, so um, Zach, uh, Jason Morrow's back off injury. Uh, did that shoulder early on last season, um, so he'll be back. He's definitely an option, uh, especially in the past game. He'll bring he'll bring a, a big big option, a big frame back for Fitzpatrick to be or Geno, whoever the the quarterback is, um, to throw at. Um, he'll probably he definitely look at the tape. He's probably a better blocker than both of both. Both Kellen Davis and Zad, Zach Sudfeld as well, so um, that's definitely be an upgrade going forward, um, which the, the Jets needed desperately because that was quite a shock, quite a disappointing um, position last year where there was little to no production, as I said. Um, now the wide receiver position is one that I'm really excited about this year, and I think that um, obviously both sides you got. Marshall on the left and Decker on the right. You can't go wrong there. 26 touchdowns combined last year between the two of them, both over a 1,000 yards. Um, if they're not the best one-two combo in the game, they'd be right up there. Um, Marshall, better than ever. Um, 14 touchdowns from him. Um, some great catches. Um, just looking back, that Miami game at London, first play of the game one-on-one -on -one against Miami's best corner and just made the play and he's, he's just he's just a playmaker and that's something that they the Jets have lacked in the last three or four years um, with um, in terms in terms of that outside presence um, then you've got Decker who played a bit of more in a slot last year um, him and Quincy and uh, will share that role um, they're both big big bodies um, Decker's definitely improved his blocking, um, so that's another option. Another option that he can use as well. Um, and you've also got, as I said, we've said quite a few times, um, with those four wide. Oh, pardon me. Those four wide sets that Gailey uses. There's quite a, um, it's quite a lot of snaps to go around for the back, the wide receivers. So uh, if you look at players like Devin Smith, Ken Burrell Tompkins, the new draft pick, um, seventh round, who who um, Jess Nation should definitely keep an eye on. He's he's a, he's an absolute stud. He's probably one of the steals of the draft for the Jets anyway. Um, in my opinion, is Sharon Peak. Um, he went in the seventh round, but he's he's got some great talent. Um, 
So it'll be interesting to see between um, uh, Smith, Anunwa and Tompkins who gets those three and third and fourth spot there. Um, because, um, yeah, definitely because the way that the offense is run, that they're that there's, there are those opportunities to go around. Um, so um, definitely those two positions, running back and wide receiver, are definitely two positions that the Jets can Jets Nation can hang their hat on and um, sleep well over um, compared to the, the quarterback position, which obviously is not ideal, but um, that'll be sorted out. Uh, now moving on. To the heart of the offense, um, the blokes that do all the pushing. Um, so we've got um, the offensive line, which struggled a little bit last year. Probably wasn't as good as it looked on paper, which um, was a bit disappointing. Um, first of all, with the tackles, um, Ryan Clady coming in from the Denver Broncos, uh, filling that hole that the Brickishaw Ferguson, that um, Brick had an absolutely fantastic career and. Um, They'll definitely be missed, but bringing in Ryan Clady, who's been a full-time pro bowler, only worry with Clady if he has been a bit injury-prone in the last two or three years with his knee, but um, if he can stay healthy, he's going to be a beast. He'll be top five tackles in the in the game, so um, he'll definitely, he'll definitely, um, he'll definitely, uh, yeah, as I said, be able to, to use that. Use his, he's got great athleticism, he's powerful, he's got Great reach, um, so he's he's definitely a player to look out for. Um, then we've got the other tackle position, which is a bit more of a worry. Uh, Breno Giacomini over on that side, who, to his own admission, struggled quite a bit last year. Um, not not his best season as a pro, and then um, there's not a lot behind him. Um, Brent Kualiv, and um, yeah, there's not a lot behind. So that might be the only worry. Um, for the off- whole offensive line is that right tackle position, but if Giacomini can get back to any any um, kind of form that he was at the Broncos, uh, that definitely might be a worry. Uh, now the guard positions. Uh, Brian Winters was a player at right guard who I think took a step forward last year in the last half of the season. Um, a lot more solid. Um, so he's. I'm not as worried about Winters as some other people are, but... Um, You've also you've also got um, Dakota Dozier behind him who um, who could come in and um, if needed contribute. So um, that's probably not a worry. Right guard, uh, uh, right guard, left guard, James Carpenter, who was absolutely phenomenal last year, uh, one of the best Jets Jets players. Full stop. Um, prob- definitely the best offensive lineman out of out of. Um, all of, the, all, all of them, obviously, the tackles, the guards, and the centre. Um, yeah, not a... Well, what can you say about his season? He's been... He's pass protection, getting the run game going, um, creating lanes for, for those trying to catch a fly. Got it. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so he's... He's a phenomenal... Um, he's a phenomenal guard, um... Yeah, um, so the last position we've got, I'm just having a look here, what I haven't done. The centre position. Sorry for the close-off my ugly head there. Um, Nick Mangold, another another player who's been around for a long time. He's just, he's, he just keeps getting better with age. He's, um, he's probably getting on the other side of the mountain of his career, but he's definitely not slowing down. Um, he's the glue to that offence. Um, Fitzpatrick come out last year and said he's just, so helpful with his play calls, being able to organise an offensive line, the offensive line, um, def- different different um, leadership roles in that offensive line. And so um, Bengal is definitely a player um, who is another one who can be solid. Um, so there you go, guys. Um, I've rabbled through about 15 minutes of your day. Um, so I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, we've got... We've got obviously we've got the defensive preview. It will be coming up tomorrow, hopefully. Um, so I look forward to hearing what everyone thinks. Um, check, I've got a Twitter account which is at Walsh NY Jets, the Aussie Faithful Media Group, which have been kind enough to give us this platform, which we appreciate a heap. Um, they're at Aussie Faithful on Twitter, Aussie Faithful on Facebook. Uh, my I've got a writing page which is facebook.com forward slash Sean Walsh 
Jets writer. I think I'll put it in the description. Uh, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm looking forward to the OTAs. Um, if you ever want Jets chat, um, I'm always up for it. Um, love your opinions on anything, any of my writing pieces for Aussie Guys NFL or the Jets Press. Drop me a line and I'll be happy to chat. Uh, so thanks and remember Jet up.